Hey everyone, it's Dean Bakari and welcome back to Gluten-Free Guidance brought to you by GFM TV. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about common foods with hidden gluten. So, I'm going to talk to you about what to look for on nutrition labels and the ingredients, the food manufacturer lingo that they use to cover up hidden gluten in the products that they make, and we're going to go over seven common categories of gluten-free foods and their alternatives. So, let's get right into it. When it comes to your supplements, vitamins, and medications, these are actually three areas where a lot of folks don't realize that you might be ingesting it and you don't even know it. And it could be hidden in your supplements, it could be hidden in your vitamins, it could be hidden in your medications. So be mindful of the fillers and the inactive ingredients, quote unquote, that they label this hidden gluten in. So some of the things you're gonna wanna look for are gonna be things like wheat germ, food glaze, food starch, maltodextrin, MSG, uh, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, textured plant protein, artificial flavors, different colors, natural flavors, dextrin, and medical glaze. The medical glaze is actually very, very prevalent in medications. It's that basically that glaze that they cover the capsule in. So whenever you ingest it, it actually makes it easier to swallow whenever you take your medicine and things like that. So just keep an eye out for those and be more cognizant of it because that could be the explanation and the answer to the mystery of why you're not feeling as good as you'd like to feel, especially if you've been diagnosed with celiac or gluten intolerance. So when you're going grocery shopping and you're looking for gluten-free food, especially if you've just embraced a gluten-free diet, the most important place that you're going to want to look at to identify whether it's a gluten-containing food or not is going to be right here where it says nutrition facts. But you don't want to look at the nutrition facts because that's all going to give that's only going to give you the macronutrient content of your food, so your fat, your carbs, your proteins and all that stuff. Where you really want to look is right below that table in the ingredients and the allergen label right below the ingredients and oftentimes right there you'll find a label from the manufacturer that says made on shared equipment with processed that also processes wheat soy peanuts etc etc so if you've recently embraced a gluten-free diet and you're a big fan of beer then you're probably number one feeling better because you've eliminated all of the gluten from your diet. And number two, a little annoyed because you can't drink conventional beer anymore. So luckily for you, a lot of companies have been tapping into the gluten-free market and they've been realizing that awareness has been growing more and more and more with regard to living a gluten-free lifestyle. So they've been making some pretty darn good alternatives when it comes to uh, different types of gluten-free beers. There's a ton of different companies out there and they're becoming more and more popular every day, releasing different flavors every day. What you can do is just do a quick online search for gluten-free beer companies. And the cool thing is restaurants are even becoming aware of this and they're starting to carry gluten-free beers as well. For example, I was just filming a segment, segment for GFM TV a couple of weeks ago at this place called Addiction Bistro in Beverly Hills. And the owners were both so excited because they were telling me about how they just got their liquor license and they were going to be selling gluten-free beers and they were going to be doing this humongo opening for it and all this cool stuff. So, you know, keep an eye out for that because a lot of restaurants are popping up telling people that they're actually beginning to carry gluten-free beers. Canned soups and broths. I know, I know, you're like, what, huh? Canned soups and broths. How could they have gluten in them? Well, not all of them do, but a good bit of them are gonna have gluten-containing ingredients in them. So what do you wanna look for when it comes to your canned soups and broths? Well, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the soups that say creamy on them and stuff like that, it's a good bet that they do have gluten-containing ingredients in them. So, and those are oftentimes in the form of thickeners that contain gluten. But you can just find that, boom, you just turn it around, look at the can, look at the ingredients, and look for the allergen label that says this product was processed on shared equipment with wheat, soy, peanuts, whatever. And also keep an eye out for anti-caking agents such as wheat flour as well. 
Cereals and gluten, no surprise there, right? A lot of popular cereals actually contain gluten. Take a look at the ingredients. You wanna take a look at the allergen label warning and keep an eye out for the gluten containing ingredients in those as well. Now the good news is for those of you who are just addicted to cereal, but embrace the gluten-free lifestyle, huge companies such as Kellogg's and General Mills are all coming out with gluten-free alternatives that taste just as good as the original product as well. So like this chocolate chicks that I got here. A lot of those companies are coming out with gluten-free alternatives and they're popping up on the shelves left and right. So you wanna continue reading labels though, and you wanna still be mindful Folks, just because it says gluten-free on it doesn't mean it's healthy for you. You know, these cereals still have 9, 10, 12 grams of sugar per serving. And most people don't just put one serving in there. Each serving is like three-fourths of a cup. You're going to be putting two, three cups in there. Plus, you're going to put milk in there. So you're going to be walking out of your house with 40 grams of sugar in your stomach after you've finished up with your breakfast. Now that's not healthy for anybody. From time to time, treat yourself, yes, but just because it's gluten-free doesn't mean it's gonna all of a sudden be healthy for you. So be mindful of that as well. Pastas and gluten. So for you pasta lovers out there, there's some really great news because they've got excellent gluten-free alternatives out there and they are popping up more and more at grocery stores everywhere. So. Some of my favorites are like sweet potato pasta, brown rice pasta, quinoa pasta is very popular as well, and many other options, but be mindful of that. You can look at the natural grocery, natural aisle in your grocery store, and you can often find them, even at your more popular national chains. Sausages, hot dogs, and deli meats. Now, here's a category where a lot of people just overlook, and this could be the answer to your mysterious stomach troubles that you have after you have sausages, hot dogs, and deli meats if you've identified the problem being gluten. So a lot of, a lot of those sausages, hot dogs, deli meats, and things of that nature actually contain gluten in the form of preservatives and in the form of the casing. So. What I mean by that is like with your sausages, sausage links and stuff like that, the, the clear casing that they often come in, those are just basically composite anti-caking and preservative type ingredients that they created that just so happen to have gluten in them. So keep an eye out for that. Look for certified gluten-free labels on there as well. And hey, you know what? Don't be scared to pick up the phone and call the manufacturer. You know, take you five minutes to find out whether it's got gluten in it or not. And it'll also take you five minutes to deter yourself from having an achy tummy also. Seasonings, herbs, mixes, and spices. Now, companies use anti-caking agents, again, as I mentioned earlier, in their seasonings and their prepackaged mixes as well. So and they use it oftentimes to fluff up and thicken their products. And the downside here is for folks like us that are gluten intolerant or have celiac disease, it's not gonna sit well with us. So if that's a concern to you and you're very, very sensitive to gluten, even in seasonings in small, small bits, then you wanna look for labels, again, containing that allergen label. Look for labels indicating that the product either contains gluten or look for that allergen label, in which case if you're gonna just double check it and really be sure, look at those ingredients and keep in mind that it, it's questionable. It's always gonna be questionable if they just don't specify. If it's just a plain Jane label and it doesn't even say whether it's got gluten in it or doesn't have an allergen label on it rather and the ingredients don't really give you many details, it'll say like proprietary blend or something like that, then I would just veer towards the safe side and put it back on the shelf or Double check, pick up the phone, again, call the manufacturer. And also keep in mind, just because the ingredients don't say that it's got gluten in the product doesn't mean that cross-contamination is out of the question. Because this, the plant could just run a regular pepper blend down the, uh, the chute 
and they could be filling up little canisters with them, boom, 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 right at the factory. And then they could shut that down once they're done and then put this little, this little mix of seasonings and ingredients that they've got. And hey, you know what? It's got some anti-caking agents in it. And that could go through the same exact funnel, therefore causing cross-contamination, therefore making you sick when you put it on top of your food and it gets into your belly. Other risky condiments. So stuff like salad dressings, soy sauce is a big one, ketchup, marinades, gravy mixes, and other types of just prepackaged, pre-made condiments are often gonna be an issue. So aside from looking at the nutrition label, aside from looking at the ingredients, consider perhaps making it yourself. So a quick recap for you about what we discussed on today's episode. So we talked about the nutrition label, not to just look at the nutrition facts, but to also be mindful of the ingredients and the allergen labels. We also discussed a little bit of the food manufacturer lingo and the cover-up terms that they use for ingredients that are just basically gluten. And lastly, we talked about seven common food categories and their gluten-free alternatives. If you found this video helpful or you think that it could help somebody else out, please remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like. Thanks for tuning in to Gluten-Free Guidance. I'm Dean Bakari, and I'll see you next time right here on GFM TV.